This is the most insane and potentially the most historic bit of Airbnb news that we've seen in years. Airbnb, for the first time ever, is seeking legal action against you, the Airbnb user, for violations of Airbnb Terms of Service. They could have done this a long time ago, but they've only changed their tune very recently. And the reason why is not the reason you think it is. Now, regardless of why, this is going to matter to you either as a traveler or as a host because this is going to permanently change the direction and feel of the Airbnb platform because this will not be their last legal pursuit, I guarantee it. So in this video, let me tell you what they're doing, let me tell you why, and what it's going to mean for you as an Airbnb user, host or otherwise. Let's jump in. Hey. Airbnb family, welcome back. Let me just start with the headline Airbnb is suing a user for throwing a party in California, according to the Sacramento Bee, because three people were injured during a shooting at the Airbnb home at which the party was thrown. Now, according to Airbnb, they are seeking legal action against this user for negligence, violation of their community standards, and misrepresenting their use for the Airbnb platform. Now, this is going to be a big deal because Airbnb has made a chess move. They've moved a piece that they've never before because they can't take this one back. And this is going to be a very important part of this conversation. Like this video, of course, subscribe if you're new, and let me tell you what this means when Airbnb does something like this. Now, Airbnb has been in many legal tussles. We're talking thousands of legal tussles since they've started operating and their stance has always been third party and separate. They've always said, well, we are just a facilitator of getting a host and a guest together and what happens between them really isn't our problem or any of our business. Them suing a user for damages is one of those changes. It's going to permanently change how they've classified themselves. Now, because the reason why is the user threw a party and that since that user threw a party at a home, there's damages to the home and there's damages to Airbnb's reputation and all these other things. So when Airbnb is suing this guest, it's saying that they have a relationship directly, the guest and the platform, and thus saying that the platform has a relationship with the host and the platform. Now, in addition, this is going to take away this kind of triangulation effect where it basically says that the user and the host have the relationship and Airbnb's third party and they're detached from it. Because as we all know, and many hosts agree with this, that the guest pays the platform and the platform pays the host. So there are two relationships there and that the host and the guest never really have a true connection because Airbnb exercises so much control over the booking. If you, any of you have ever used the platform, you know how much more Airbnb really tries to regulate behavior on their platform with payouts and everything else as opposed to something like booking.com. Now many people would assume that Airbnb is taking legal action against guests in order to clean up the party problem that they have in light of the fact that they just announced that they're going to be filing for their IPO. Well this sounds well and good but any company going for its IPO is not going to make any drastic changes that could negatively affect the outcome of the business. That is not why they're doing this. They're not going to take that big of a risk. The reason why I think that they're doing this is because of Donald Trump and I need you to hear me out on this. Airbnb is a platform that's been protected by the same types of legislation that Facebook and Twitter have been protected by. And if you remember recently, Trump had that spat with Twitter and he decided to sign an executive order that lifted the protections that social media platforms have for the content of their user base. So in this case, if a traveler commits fraud and defrauds a homeowner or an Airbnb host, um, and basically deceives them into letting them use their property, the host is now a victim of fraud because the user is like, I'm gonna be staying at this home for you know a family trip, my sister's coming to town, it's just gonna be three of us, and then 80 people show up. That was actually a crime that was committed. And so now Airbnb is liable for that crime committed because one user damaged the other on Airbnb's platform and they're no longer protected legally. As users start to wise up to this potential leak, um, users could be pursuing Airbnb for damages. Now, Airbnb has to find a way to protect themselves so that way they don't look like they are the ones acting negligently. So if Airbnb takes legal action against their worst guests, it will appear to the world like they are not just allowing anything to happen on their platform. Thus, this will help them not be liable for instances of fraud because they're actively trying to police against them. If Airbnb did nothing, this would be that perfect storm where hosts like us could make a class action lawsuit for, you know, for starters against Airbnb for allowing thousands of parties to happen on the platform. Now, 
Airbnb could have made this change back in November 2019 where five people were killed at a shooting in California again. Or in the last couple of months where there's parties in LA or Houston where there's shootings and people have died. Parties have been rampant. And the information, there's a writer, he's actually going to be releasing an article soon, we just spoke yesterday, about how bad these parties have gotten. It's a big problem. Airbnb is not changing their tune because they really truly want to just prevent parties at the risk of them losing business. They've only recently decided to make this change because of something else. Otherwise, they would have acted over a year ago this way to start preventing parties. So in my, my, my firm opinion, I believe it's because they now have a new liability opened up and we are doing things with that now. And this is a tangential example. So if you're not an Airbnb host, you may not want to hear this. So you can move on and click to a different video. But for you hosts, this might be important. A guest damaged one of my properties, caused about $2,000 in damages and stayed later than they were supposed to. They stayed until about 1, 1.30 PM. So by the time we had possession of the property, taken photos and decided to start this resolution process, we did not start the process until the, or after 4 PM check-in time for the home. So we started that resolution, requested the monies, the guests denied it. We escalated it to Airbnb and they swatted it down and said, in order for, for it to qualify for the host guarantee, you had to file it before the next guest's check-in window started. And so I responded to Airbnb and said, well, in light of everything that's going on legally right now, um, I'm going to request that you pay for these damages if the host guarantee can't because you're the one liable for the damages. So I sent them like my reasoning and my logic and it's pretty much sent them the invoice for $2,200. So stay tuned. If this works, this will affirm that Airbnb's relationship with the host and the guest is different than they've been trying to sell it for the last few years. And now they have to change the way that they operate. So more to come. Of course, if you have questions or comments, want to add to this conversation, put them in the comments. And of course, as always, I will see you on the other side.